What's up guys? I wanted to go ahead and do a NA2T daily driving update, um, how it's been for me, and basically just uh, what all I've kind of felt when I've done this. Um, so if you don't remember, I did the NA2T around December of last year, um, and I tried to do a couple videos on it, and I apologize I didn't really get too many out, uh, because it was kind of a tight time frame, and I had a lot of you know, trial and error stuff, and I hate filming stuff that I go ahead and just uh, have to tell you that I did it wrong and go back over it. Um, I, I don't want you guys to do the wrong thing, so it is an important thing when I do that. But I wanted to go ahead and kind of just go over the um, ability to daily drive an NA2T. Um, the ability to NA drive a 33-year-old car at this point for mine. Um, you know, you can get a little bit older, a little bit newer. Uh, but basically, um, in all, it's honestly been so much fun. The NA2T, it makes it feel so much better. I think if I were to do it again, I probably would have gone for a slightly smaller turbo. Um, it does take a little bit for this one to spool up. This is the HX35, so it's pretty big. Um, this specific one came off of a Dodge Diesel Cummins turbo, uh, a turbo diesel engine. So it's a pretty big turbo, um, but it really does make some good power. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get onto a dyno here um, with a professional tuner and really get some good numbers and everything out of it. Um, but basically, uh, the only problem that I've had so far, this is, okay, I've had two problems. One of them I can fix and one of them is a little more difficult. Um, basically, the biggest problem I've had is the cooling system, actually. Um, so you can see right here I've got two 12-inch fans and my two-core aluminum eBay radiator. If you don't remember, I bought this radiator probably a year and a half-ish ago. Um, and I got this on eBay, it came with the fans and everything. And honestly, it was a great radiator, and it is still a great radiator. It's got pretty good quality. I haven't noticed any problems with it or anything. Um, but the problem is, is that at idle, um, and if I drive it when it's kind of hot outside, I live in New Mexico, so it gets hot pretty easily. Um, I've noticed the temperatures keep creeping up a little bit more than they should. The stock thermostat opens at 80 degrees Celsius, um, and I've noticed, and I've seen. I can look in Niztune, which I have for the tuning software, um, and I can see the temperature of the block actually gets up. Um, I've seen it up over 100 degrees Celsius before when I really thrashed it, um, but I've always let it cool down because I obviously don't want to leave it up that high. Um, but even just driving it, it was probably 90 degrees Fahrenheit outside, the ambient temperature, and it really took a toll on the cooling. I was on the highway, and it was probably around 90 to 95 degrees on the highway that the coolant temperature was in Celsius. Um, so it's getting, it was getting up there, you know, it should be around 80 all the time. Um, and this cooling system, it's literally right at the edge of its limits. If you just push it a little more than necessary, it'll actually start pushing you up above that 80 degrees where it sits. So really, um, that has been the biggest problem. I have a Champion 3-row radiator on order, um, but parts are surprisingly difficult to get at the moment. Um, so I don't know exactly when I'll be able to get that in, so I'm being very cautious with it at the moment. Um, driving it during the night when it's not hot outside has been the biggest thing for me um, because it just lets the cooler air flow through the radiator and it keeps it a lot cooler. Um, but that's really the biggest problem for me. Once I get that Champion 3 row in, we should be perfectly fine. I'm going to try to use these two 12 inch still. Um, I've heard some people use Volvo radiator fans, or I think a 93 Sentra fan shroud um, will fit with a little bit of trimming, and it's got two fans, um, and you can hook it up to a two fan controller for different speeds if you really want. Um, but you may have seen my uh, R134A conversion where I went ahead and went over all of this right here, the wiring for the fans to get them set up correctly. Um, so if you're wondering about wiring for that, go ahead and check that out. Um, just skip to the part where I talk about the wiring. I think it's the second half of the video. Um, but it's, it is pretty useful to kind of know how to wire these up correctly so you will always be good. Um, but that's really the biggest problem I've had with the NA2T. Um, and I call that one kind of unfixable in a term because I have to wait for a new part. I can't really do anything about it. You know, I've tried burping the system. I even removed my thermostat to see if pulling that out was actually a problem and if it was, you know, restricting flow or something. It wasn't the thermostat. It still does the same thing with it out. Um, and you want a thermostat in because it'll actually keep your engine at the correct temperature to operate at. If it gets too cold while you're driving, um, you're actually going to be damaging your engine because your oil is not at perfect temperature it should be. But to the fixable thing that I've had a problem with, um, and that just kind of takes time, and in, in my case probably just money, um, is the Nistune software. Nistune is actually a pretty great way to go if you're going to be tuning it for an NA2T. Um, something that's not super high horsepower, this is probably going to be around 300, 350 horsepower when I'm done with it. Um, obviously I can make a lot more if, with that turbo, it's a very big turbo. 
Um, I could crank it up a lot more with the boost if I wanted to, um, but I'm not doing that quite at the moment. But um, Nistune has been a problem for me because I am not a tuner and I don't have a dyno. Um, so I, all I've been doing is road tuning and the road tune has actually worked out pretty well. It's taken me a good couple times to get it down. Um, for me who's no experience, I've never done it before. Um, but now I have a really good tune on it. I'm going to go ahead and make a Nistune video here soon to kind of show you guys how to do it if you're kind of getting into it. But really the best way to do that is just to take it to a tuner who has a dyno, um, somebody who's acquainted with Nistune and how it works. I've got a guy here in Albuquerque, I think it's uh, NM Imports, and uh, he's very experienced with it. Um, the problem is it just costs a little bit of money and time. And also for me, the reason I haven't taken it is because my cooling system is not up to par. Once my cooling system is good um, and I have about $600 to go, do, go tune it, I think it's $300 to rent the dyno and then another $100 an hour um, in order to tune it. And I'm estimating it's going to take two to three hours. Um, so I, I don't know how long a tune normally takes, um, but that's just a rough estimate for you guys um, what, what, a, what a dyno should really cost you. You don't, you don't want some guy who's like, yeah, give me 100 bucks and I'll do it. Uh, you want somebody who really knows what they're doing, um, and so I'm going to take it to somebody who actually knows what they're doing um, once I'm ready for that. But um, tuning has been a little bit of a nightmare getting it correct. Um, basically, uh, the biggest problem is, is that you have a map that you reference from the stock turbo map. Um, they have all of those for you, and I'll show you how to import those on my video um, and look at them. But pretty much anywhere where you're in boost... Um, you have to kind of redo the map um, for your specific turbo because the stock turbos are actually really small. Um, so even though you say you're hitting eight pounds of boost, it's a small turbo is eight pounds of boost. They're very different when you think about them. Um, it all t it all depends on the di diameter, excuse me, of the pipe and how much that eight psi actually is. Um, I think the stock turbos are eight to ten. I forget, but. Uh, it's different depending on what turbo you have, so what you have to do is you have to go into all of the boost sections of the map, scale it accordingly. Um, for your injectors, you have to scale them accordingly. Um, there is a little bit of math to be done. These are 550cc injectors, um, but they're at, like, I want to say one bar of, uh, of fuel pressure. But you have to translate that. I'm running, you know, 0.9 bars of fuel pressure or something. Um, I'd have to translate this into PSI. It's like 50 PSI for 550 cc's, but I'm running 40 PSI. So you have to actually have to scale those down. Um, so I'm actually around 500 cc injectors, uh, maybe a little bit less than that. Um, so there's a lot in the tuning software that you kind of have to go over in order to get it uh, where you need to be. But I'll definitely go ahead and show you guys that when we get to that point. Um, other than that, um, the only other problem I've had is the AC. You may have watched my video. I have uh, this little pulley here that I added in um, in order to get around my intercooler pipes down there. And it's it's worked really well. I'll be I'll be 100% honest. I didn't think it was going to work as as well as it did. This is a 370Z idler pulley um, that I just welded onto a piece of metal back there onto the uh, tensioner bracket right here. And uh, it definitely worked. I got a longer belt and it's doing good. The problem is if you can see... See if I can focus on that for you guys. There's cracks in the belt. Um, those cracks aren't good. Uh, it just basically means that it is a highly reduced lifespan. Um, the good thing is that this belt has a warranty, so I'll probably always just keep getting warrantied belts because of how quickly they break. But the reason for it is because V-bands are not supposed to go backwards. Um, you can see the angle that that belt is at. That's not how V-bands go. They simply go inwards concave. This is convex. Um, so it is cracking the belt as I drive with it. I've had this on for about a month now, um, and there's pretty much cracks everywhere um, on it. So I'm going to go ahead and drive it until it gets really bad. I'll warranty it out, get a new one, and then just kind of probably redo that. Redo that. Really, I only need the AC when it's hot outside, um, so I'm not too worried about it. And the good thing about this is if the AC belt does happen to break, the only thing on that belt is the AC. So if it breaks, you know, I'm only losing AC, which isn't the worst thing in the world. It's not like it's the alternator or the water pump, um, something important. So I'll probably just keep warranting these out um, and replacing them. What you could do is maybe move this a little bit lower to down here, and then it's not quite as big of a bend. You know, it's a pretty big backwards bend right there. It doesn't like it. Um, 
but that's just kind of how it is. I'm All right, sorry about that. Um, but as I was saying, I am running the Z32 MAF. You can see it right down there. Um, it is honestly really great. It is plug and play. Um, there's just one tiny thing you have to change in the ECU to drop it down to a five volt MAF system. Um, and then in NIS2, when you just select, you have the uh, Z32. Um, it does change on the year, depending on uh, what year you have for your ECU and how to do that. Um, for 86, it's literally just unsoldering one pin, um, or you can just, you know, cut the pin off because there's a certain board that connects to the math. Um, you just literally cut the pin for it. Um, but it's super simple. It's really taken a lot of the guesswork out because the Z31 maths are so unreliable. Um, it's just hard to get a good bead on them. Um, but this one is working really well so far. Um, you can see I have my blow-off valve right next to it. Um, that has worked really good, and I love the sound it makes. It's not turbo fluttery, um, which I do love the sound of turbo flutter, um, but this one makes a nice just psh sound when you let off the gas. Um, other than that, this has honestly been a really, really reliable build, um, other than the tune, which is all my fault because I'm inexperienced with it. Um, I probably will in the future try to go to a one step colder uh, spark plug. I've heard that that just helps a little tiny bit. Um, nothing crazy. And then um, I did. I took the thermostat out for the cooling system, so I might go ahead and drop in a slightly lower temperature thermostat, so it gives me a little bit of ability to kind of, you know, go up and down with uh, thrashing it. <laughs> um, but honestly, I'm very happy with the way this NA2T has performed. Um, you know, I drive it about 80 miles every single week um, to go down to school and then back another 80 miles um, on the weekends. So uh, I, did, I do get a good amount of seat time and it is very, very drivable. Um, I'm able to tune the, uh, I'm able to tune the fuel map. Um, so on the highway, um, I'm able to lean it out to basically where it should be on a nice, really lean cruise. Um, and it's, it's making it feel like, kind of like sip fuel basically. Um, so I do have pretty good gas mileage on the highway, which is what the majority of what I do. Um, so that's a good, it's a good thing for that. Um, other than that guys, I really haven't had any problems. Um, the Z32 brakes have been working great. I'm going to be upgrading to Z32 rotors here soon. Um, so definitely watch out for a video for that. Um, these are not slip on hubs or slip on rotors like the later style turbo models are. So I'll go ahead how you can convert these bolt on hubs to slip on. Um, and we'll go over that in a little bit later. Um, definitely wait for that Niztune video to come out. Um, it's just really helpful to kind of know what you're doing. Uh, there was a lot of guesswork at the beginning um, and a lot of resources that I didn't know were available. Um, Niztune actually has a good deal of manuals online. You just kind of have to find them, so definitely look out for that. Um, if you guys have any questions about my NA2T swap, I know I didn't really get to do a lot of the filming that I wanted to. I wanted to take you guys through everything and really kind of show you how to put it all together in the end. Um, but like I said, there was just so much guesswork in it. It was honestly making it very hard to get the filming done um, and the time schedule. It just didn't work out correctly. So if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them down below or go to the zgarage.net under the contact tab and send me an email there. Um, it's very easy to get a hold of me. Don't even, don't even worry about that. I'll, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, so there you go guys, uh, definitely drop a comment down below if you're interested in something, and I'll see you guys later.